So after giving the first lecture of the conference, I'm giving the last lecture of the conference. So I feel like a parenthesis. OK, so let's, let's see what we want to prove. So the conjecture is the following. We, we fix uh, Q inside E uh, CM field of degree 2D. And then the equality that we want to prove is that 2D times uh, the faulting side associated to, so this is as a fixed embedding inside the complex numbers. So you want to compute the faulting side associated to the Abelian variety with the uh, complex multiplication by the ring of integers over the total reflex algebra with the uh, uh, total same type phi sharp. And uh, now I want to rewrite this, the, the expression on the right hand side that involved the derivatives of uh, L functions uh, in terms of the complete L function. Okay, so, <coughs> so there is a, uh, a lambda instead of an L that absorbs the discriminant of E and F. where gamma is simply uh, the gamma function, special values of the gamma function, maybe the derivative, uh, derivative, and with minus sign at one, <coughs> which is the euler Mascheroni constant. Uh, k is the character associated to the quadratic extension given by considering the total real field F inside E. And uh, uh, Lambda chi of s is the complete L function so that it satisfies uh, the functional equation. Okay? So I've simply rewritten what we had on the blackboard on Monday in lecture one in terms of the completed uh, L function. And uh, we have some ingredients. So where are we? So if you fix uh, v to be equal to e, and we fix a lambda in f such that sigma 0 of lambda is negative, and sigma of lambda is positive for every embedding of f into the reals different from sigma 0, uh, we have associated to that a quadratic form by sending x the trace from f to q of lambda x x bar. So vq has signature n2, where n is 2d minus 2. And we have also fixed uh, l inside v a maximal quadratic lattice. And to all these choices, we associated, uh, to all these choices, we associated, first of all, uh, a zero-dimensional Shimuna variety. OK. So this is a finite et al. This is finite over spec OE e is the reflex field for the zero dimensional Shimura variety. So this is the sort of big CM cycle that yesterday we constructed in a quite indirect way. Okay. And we also constructed a map to ML, which is the integral model. Actually, let me also assume since the beginning that d is really equal to 2, the integral model of our orthogonal type or g-spin type Shimura variety ML. And we had some extra structures. 
so over uh, y0, we had uh, an abelian scheme with cm by the ring of integers and cm type, which was phi sharp. We also had an Hermitian uh, emetrized line bundle. And uh, so this abelian scheme with CM, we can associate another metrons line bundle whose degree computes exactly the Falting's height. Okay, computing uh, H Faltings of E sharp and phi sharp. Then over ML, we also had another metrized line bundle and what I want to discuss now and also we saw yesterday let me maybe put it here so let me write a formula let's see if I written it somewhere uh, yes so we have, let me just rewrite the formula that, we, that I, I had on the blackboard yesterday. I hope I, I got all the constant right. So 2D times the degree of uh, omega hat A sharp. And let me uh, write here the degree with respect to Y0 in the sense that I, I divide by the degree of Y0. So it's a weighted degree, so it will not depend on where I go. For example, I will compute the same things for YL, okay, using the same formulas. So I will simply incorporate this uh, averaging over the number of points of Y0 in there. Okay, so this is equal to one fourth of the arithmetic degree over Y0 of my Y0 hat minus one fourth log of the discriminant of f plus d half of the log of two pi. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> that's the situation so far. So this is the quantity that we want to compute. So this is really two d, the Falting's height of e sharp phi sharp, so it's the left hand side of the equality that we want to prove. And we compare it to the arithmetic degree of this metrized line bundle. Now, <coughs> what I want to do is to compare now the pullback of this metrized line bundle to YL and the pullback of this metrized line bundle omega zero hat to YL, okay? And that comparison I can do only uh, up to log of some uh, primes, which are the bad primes, so which are defined in terms of the lattice. Remember that this, this is intrinsically defined in terms of uh, my E, <coughs> and maybe the choice of sigma zero, while for the definition of YL, uh, the, the lattice really played, played a role, okay? So I want to be maybe precise about uh, the definition of what I consider to be bad primes, okay? So definition, so a prime P is called uh, good for L, and in fact I should say L and lambda, because the quadratic form depended on lambda, okay? But we will ignore simply the lambda. If for every prime calligraphic P of OF over P, 
if I let the LP to be the intersection of L tensor with ZP with E tensor FP. So remember that my V is equal to E. So I can consider the completion with respect to that prime P of F, okay? And I get an extension of degree two of the completion of F at P. And I can intersect with the uh, periodic completion of L that will define some part of my lattice, okay? So I want to assume that, uh, so one, if P is unramified, in E, then I want to assume that my LP is uh, OE tensor OF, OFP stable. So the goodness of the primes simply measure essentially how much your lattice L which has nothing to do by the choice, very generic choice that I made, uh, has nothing to do with the uh, E structure on V. It measures how much this lattice is also an OE module. Okay? Simply a, a precise measure of that. Okay? <coughs> and second, if P is ramified, in E, then there exists an OEP stable lattice lambda P. So I have only one prime in this case of E over P. And so I will just write P for the same prime, so abusing notation. So there is an OEP stable lattice such that my LP is contained inside lambda P and the inverse different of EP over FP. OK? Um, OK, so these are weird conditions that, as I said, uh, measure how stable our lattice L is for the action of OE, okay? In particular, if you start with any maximal quadratic lattice L, okay? Of course, but after inverting finitely many primes, these will be stable under the action of OE. So for all those primes, uh, all those primes will be good. So for any given lattice, there is only really, uh, finitely many primes that are bad. And uh, I will denote DL to be the finite set of primes not good for L and lambda. OK? Of course, you could relax this hypothesis, right, and say, well, I just take all the primes such that the completion of P, the prime P, is stable with respect to the action of OE. Fine, but then you wouldn't get the following result. That if you intersect over all possible choices of L and lambda by the L. This is the empty set. Okay, so it's an algebra uh, number theory statement that sort of measures all possible all possible choices. Okay, so you know what the bad primes are. And now uh, with the definition of the bad primes, I can compare the two uh, 
line bundles pull back to YL. Okay? So we start putting things together. So another proposition. Okay, so maybe I'll write also a notation. Given two rational numbers, we write A tilde with a sub L B if A is equal to B up to uh, Q linear combination of log of primes that are in this finite set of very bad primes of for L, okay? And the first proposition that I have is that if I take uh, the degree of my omega hat restricted to YL, and I take the degree of my omega zero hat over Y zero, which is the same by the normalization to the degree of the pullback of uh, omega zero hat to YL, these are the L equivalent in the sense that I've just defined up to log of the discriminant of F. Idea of proof well uh, over YL, even over complex numbers, uh, both omega 0 and omega arise as field 1 of some uh, Ram object associated to the representation V of T. Recall that yesterday we wrote so T who is the uh, algebraic group uh, defining the Shimura varieties YL and Y0 and we embedded that torus and into G spin, that's a mutual natural map to SOV. And in both cases, so uh, omega zero was defined by taking this uh, representation, taking the Rama object, taking field one, okay? My <coughs> omega over ML was defined by taking this representation. But now if you restrict it to YL, it's the same as the object that you get simply by factoriality of these constructions from composing uh, the inclusion of the torus T in G with the representation to S O V. Okay? So, uh, so they are equal over CYLC and hence over YL. Okay? Uh, you can also compare the matrix. And here, uh, for the metric on V, for omega, we used uh, Q V to define the Peterson metric. For omega 0, uh, I was very brief yesterday. We instead used the trace from FQ of x, x bar. So the two metrics are off by the element sigma 0 lambda. But then it turns out, but then computing over yl1 over 
the L, by this I mean that I invert all the primes belonging to the L. In fact, it turns out that my omega is really equal to lambda times df2 minus 1 tensor of f omega 0. So remember that yesterday I told you that there is a, an action of OE on omega 0 via sigma 0. So there is also an action of OF. Why? Uh, how do you get this computation? Here you use keys in modules. Okay? So to check that, so right, so they have the same rational structures. And inside this rational structure, you have two integral structures that you want to compare. And you use these two integral structures over primes, they are the Durham realization of the associated uh, et al piadic uh, eta prime p of the associated uh, sort of certain et al piadic uh, 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 representations on V associated to two different lattices. The lattice L, when you talk about omega, that lives in field one of a certain V ram that is the ram realization of the piadic representation associated to L inside V. And for omega zero instead, remember, we used OE inside E, OK? Uh, so Kissing theory is very good because it allows to sort of give this interpretation, this sort of correspondence between uh, piadic representations and the ROM objects integrally. And we want to compare those objects integrally. And this functor tells you that you can simply compare the two piadic representations integrally. But piadically, uh, as I explained yesterday, the representation associated to L is L hat, completed at P, L completed at P. And for uh, omega zero, or v, what we called yesterday, oops, V the ram zero, you take instead the periodic completion of OE. Okay? So you are just uh, comparing inside the completion of V at P. Uh, certain lattices, and then this computation can be done exactly thanks to this definition. And you compare that relevant uh, piadic uh, representations that factors through this calligraphic P uh, are, are really the same. And that's the outcome that you get then using Kissing's theory. Okay? So very vague, but uh, uh, use Kissing get this equality. And this is the main reason why we can do the computation for CM points, right? And not for more general uh, higher dimensional cycles because, as I said, when you want to do these computations at primes, you need to understand things integrally. And Kissing theory for that is very good if you work with zero dimensional objects. Okay, so that's just an idea. But we can uh, put uh, here then that this is tilde L equivalent to one fourth of the degree over YL of omega hat. Okay. So now uh, we want to compute this degree, maybe up to tilde L equivalence. And for that, uh, we will express the omega hat on, uh, on ML as a combination of the Higner divisors that I have defined algebraically and to which uh, yesterday Jan Brunier also explained how you can associate uh, a green function following Kudla. 
So I want to express omega hat really as a combination of these arithmetic Higner divisors. Okay, and the strategy. Express omega hat as a combination of the arithmetic arithmetic Higner divisors z hat m mu for m and mu as usual and then compute the intersection of arithmetic intersection between these Higner divisors and YL. Okay. Why should this be any easier than compute directly the degree of uh, our metroized line model omega hat? For this, there are very precise conjectures of what these numbers should be. So, uh, Brunier, Kudla, and Yang give conjectural formulas. This really fits into, into this Kudla's, Kudla's program. So formulas meaning, meaning uh, what uh, Jan Brunier explained yesterday, that there are certain Eisenstein series of which you have to take the derivative. Remember the slogan that yesterday Jan uh, gave us that if you want to compute arithmetic intersections, you should use the derivative. There is certainly a certain Eisenstein series of which you take the derivative and uh, of which the um, coefficients of the Q expansion should really give those numbers. Okay? Of course, uh, there is the problem that usually those numbers are as expressed as product of, as Jan yesterday explained of local Whittaker functions, which are defined as local densities, integrals. So the formula also means that you have to do these integrals to get true numbers, right? But actually, uh, this, has been, uh, this has been done by Kula and Yang in many, in many situations. And at least, so here I should say, precise delta L numbers in the sense that uh, uh, you can compute those numbers and for the good primes uh, it's quite easy okay uh, for bad primes uh, there are still formulas there are still, still polynomials in P that uh, give you the number that you want the contribution at P the finite places the problem is that these polynomials, the worse the lattice is, the higher degree they have. So if you want to compute whether it's 1, 2, 3, 4, right, this polynomial evaluated in P, it becomes complicated. While for those uh, good primes, the polynomial that you have to evaluate are just linear polynomials in P. So I could compute them as well, since they were linear polynomials. And so this is another reason why we need actually to work up to those primes because we can really get numbers. Okay, so let's try to make this uh, strategy precise because this is the strategy, but of course when you try to make it work, there are always sort of little things that make it more cumbersome than it should. So theorem, so suppose that n, which remember is 2d minus 2, is bigger or equal to 3. So you see that's which will almost always hold, except for d equal 2, where we have to do something extra then, right? Then there exist finitely many 
integers c and mu for m in the allowed set and mu in the allowed set. And uh, we also have a factor c0, 0, 0, which is different from 0. And there exists a rational section psi of my Hodge bundle to that non uh, zero power defined over Q such that so now omega hat can be represented by the arithmetic divisor associated to psi, okay? So at the algebraic level, you simply take the divisors where it's supported, and then at infinity, you simply take minus log of the norm of this section for the norm that we have on omega hat. And this can be written as a combination over my m mu of uh, c minus m mu z hat m mu. And then there are some uh, nasty factors that we have to take into account. One is the fact that uh, the metrics that you get are slightly different. OK. But which is good for us, because these are exactly the kind of things that appear in uh, Colmes conjecture. And then uh, I still have some vertical component the sum of certain primes p uh, dividing the order of L0 over L epsilon p 0. So no, no metric at infinity is just a problem of having possibly vertical components, which we cannot control about the zeros of this uh, rational section, such that epsilon p is supported in characteristic p. And well, if p is odd and p squared does not divide L dual module L, so that we have nice integral models of which we can compute uh, local deformation theory and so on and so on, my EPD then is zero. It disappears, no problem. Two, uh, if n is bigger or equal to five, then EP is equal to zero for P odd. And if n is bigger or equal to 5 and L is self-dual at 2, then epsilon 2 is equal to 0. Uh, in fact, we can even say, since we have number 2, is equal to 0. OK, so we managed write my omega hat as a combination of Igner divisors, okay, except for those assumptions. One and these assumptions. Or that assumption is subsumed by this assumption. Okay? Okay, so this is another source of complication when you write down a paper and it blows it up by a few pages because you don't want to have those conditions when you prove the average Comes conjecture, OK? And I wanted to write the precise statement instead of being vague, because at least I want to say uh, what you can do and why eventually the proof is a bit uh, complicated. Because <coughs> the way you work, if you're not under those assumptions, you simply use the idea that we had yesterday that I explained yesterday. So instead of working with L, 
you embed L inside a larger lattice, which you can take of arbitrarily uh, high dimension, okay, so that the N, the associated N tilde will exceed five. And then you do this construction. I told you that the omega hat that you get on the larger Shimura variety restrict to the omega hat that we want to consider on the smaller one. So we are fine. But then the problem uh, rises, another problem rises, right? So that's the general strategy for low dimensional n to get rid of this extra dirt that I will not consider anymore, okay? Because you see, uh, the good point about the big CM points, which is not the case for the small CM points, is that uh, these, for every M and mu, have proper intersection. Why do they have proper intersection? Well, I told you, uh, the image of these divisors inside uh, the Shimura variety over the complex numbers is given by the fact that you have certain positive definite elements, lambda in V, which will define special endomorphism for the Kugas attack abelian variety on the associated point, okay? But I told you yesterday that at these big CM points, your V that you're considering has a natural E action. So if you have one special endomorphism, which is non-zero, you have that the all of V consists of special endomorphism, simply because you have an action of E that preserves special endomorphism, which is not possible because that would force your V to be positive definite and have signature m plus two comma zero dot end of the proof. So these have proper intersection, which is very good if you want to compute this arithmetic intersection distinguishing finite part, infinity part, you can evaluate green functions, you don't have to worry about singularities and so on. But now if you enlarge the lattice, you miss that. Okay? So you need extra care when you add L into a larger lattice to be able to take these finitely many integers here with the property that the Z hat and mu in the larger Shimura variety still do not contain the CM cycle. And here is where uh, this theorem of Borchers that was the, of Brunier that was mentioned that you can make such a choice enters, okay? Okay, so the theorem can be massaged to sort of get rid also of this uh, extra, extra factor, okay? So work to get rid uh, of this omega hat uh, and I will simply ignore it. Okay. Uh, just on Borchers theory, actually. No, no. So these are, this is really defined as a Borchers lift. Again, this is the resource of complications there because Borchers lift is defined only of the complex numbers, while here I'm claiming something <laughs> much stronger. <laughs> okay. But uh, luckily, uh, Fritz Hormann uh, worked out rationality properties of those Borchers lifts, which give those, uh, those sections. Okay. Yeah. So strategy one, even if, as I said, with complications, that you know will add like 20, 30 pages in your paper, is done. So now you have to, com to compute. Um, compute uh, uh, the finite intersection. And then <coughs> if you write, uh, so we write z hat simply for the, this combination of divisors as in the theorem, and now uh, 
the theorem that we want to compute the, to prove is that if we compute this arithmetic degree and we divide always by the degree of the Shimura variety, this is equivalent to minus 2 lambda prime divided by lambda 0 chi times C 0, 0. Because then this, thanks to this formula, the C 0, 0 and the C 0, 0, which is non 0, will cancel. Okay? You have this extra factor that is expected by uh, Colmes. Then by the computation that we have, we also have this, uh, this uh, extra factor here. And uh, uh, one can prove that this implies this delta L implies Colmes. So if you, that's my claim. So if you prove this theorem and you add up all the uh, uh, numbers that we got so far, you exactly get Colmes up to this indeterminacy of log of primes. Okay? But since the intersection of all the L is equal to the empty set, in fact, we get Colmes varying L. So that's really the key theorem that we want to prove. Because Colmes has to do with two quantities that are fixed, do not depend on the choice of L or nothing, right? Two real numbers that you want to compare. So if you can prove that they are equal up to some log finite set of primes, since log of, pr log of primes are Q linearly independent, varying the log of primes for which you have indeterminacy, you can get rid of all of them, basically, and get uh, the average Colmes on, on the nose. OK, so that's the theorem that uh, is actually the first main result of our paper. Luckily, uh, Bournier Kudal Yang did what I consider the hard work. It has the computation at infinity. Okay? Because to compute things at infinity, you use this uh, regularized uh, theta integrals and so on, which I would never, been able, never be able to compute. So the key input is uh, a theorem of B K Y that tells you the following, that uh, if capital phi is the green function, for our divisor c hat, I mean, they did it for every single dm hat, but I'll just put things together. Then, so the value of my green function at the points, so I sum up over all points and again always divide by in this case twice the degree okay so this is the uh, infinity contribution uh, I'm using the fact that you have uh, proper uh, intersection so that's the contribution to infinity this is equal to the sum of certain e and mu C minus M mu divided by my completed L function evaluated at zero, where now I have to make some space um, the E M mu, or where sort of the sum of a m mu q to the m is the diagonal restriction of the derivative evaluated 
at s equals 0 of an incoherent weight 1 Ziegel Hilbert Eisenstein series for the field F. Okay, okay, very complicated. But what I want to say is that uh, you can sort of play around with the definition that uh, Jan gave yesterday and uh, associated to our big CM cycle, you have your field F, you can define a certain Hilbert Einstein series. This has been done by Kudla, okay? Then you can restrict uh, <coughs> So you can diagonally restrict and get a really formal Q expansion for the usual uh, e two pi i tau, okay? And uh, uh, what you what you get, I mean, it should be really vector value. There are this mu. Let me be vague about this. Um, what you get are uh, an expectation of certain numbers. Uh, by this Einstein series that perfectly match up with the computations that they did for the contribution at infinity of uh, the arithmetic intersection. Okay, but now it's a bit uh, bizarre because we have a contribution at infinity where, uh, uh, sorry, mm. sorry, sorry, like that. Apologies. Uh, something bizarre because here we have, uh, ah, and here I should also put m equal to zero. So you have uh, one contribution. Uh, so the a zero zero will contribute is essentially equal to what we want to compute. Uh, lambda prime chi zero, and that's very nice. So it's exactly what one would like to have, okay? But then there is also this junk at for a, for positive m. So what is the explanation then of the contribution of m? bigger than zero. So here it's m bigger or equal to zero. And for the m uh, bigger than zero, uh, there's something that does not appear here. And then the conjecture of big y uh, is that uh, the uh, a m mu divided by lambda chi zero uh, give the finite intersection of your z hat and your y l finite, at least up to those bad primes. OK? So as I said, we want to compute this quantity. We managed to, con to compute the contribution at infinity. There are some junk that we cannot control. And uh, BKY, inspired by the Kudlas program, conjectured that this is not really junk. It's exactly the finite part of the contribution <coughs> that if you sum up, remember that you have to change the sign of this to get the contribution at the infinity. If you sum, it, sum, you sum it up, it cancels out all the terms except the m equals 0 term, which is exactly what we want. Okay. 
Okay, and uh, <coughs> uh, what we did actually uh, is exactly to prove we proved this conjecture. Maybe I should be more precise. So they give a conjecture that this should be the case without the uh, indeterminacy of the dead primes. And we sigma L proved this conjecture. OK? Uh, and these were actually uh, more than half of the paper that I haven't explained at all. I will not explain, of course, uh, goes. And uh, um, again, to, to do that, um, you need to do, uh, first of all, count uh, where the, uh, for every single z, m, mu, hat, uh, where the, the sort of intersection with the, your y, l is supported. And again, the description of the primes where this, is, this happens is exactly as uh, Jan suggested at the end of his, of his talk. So there's this uh, difference set of primes where a, certain, uh, for, where a certain prime P is not represented for a certain incoherent uh, uh, quadratic space. And this is the incoherent quadratic space appearing. So you know from Kudra's program where the primes, where the intersection is supported should be. And in fact, this is the case. Then you count the number, the, uh, you have want to count the number of points. And this is a certain Whittaker function. And that also matches up. And finally, the difficult part is to compute the local multiplicities of the intersection that do not depend on the point. And that should match up with the derivative of a certain uh, p factor of a Whittaker function. So this derivative has been computed uh, by essentially by uh, Kudla and Yang, except for p equal 2. And that's the case that we had to deal with our paper to get things not up to log 2 to make this horrible, uh, this nice computation. OK? And you get numbers, and you really integers, uh, maybe up to a half. Uh, and then you have to compute that this ma really matches up with the length of the local ring that you want. And here you use Kissing theory, OK? Because uh, the points of intersection measure where <coughs> uh, on, uh, on your uh, Kuga's attack, if you want, over YL, or on your A sharp, you have a special endomorphism. In this case, they are the same up to this uh, tilde L. Uh, you have a special endomorphism. And the length of the local ring simply measures how much in the direction of this arithmetic curve you can lift this endomorphism. Something that we've already seen appearing, mentioned for elliptic curves is gross classical result. So we had to reprove this result in, uh, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this context. And for that, you exactly do Kissing theory, so you know what is this integral of the RAM object? It has an Hodge filtration. Okay. If you have a special endomorphism in, in over some point, this will have some uh, uh, crystalline incarnation that gives you an element in this the RAM object. And you just look how much it matches. It stays inside field one. And it's a computation that can be, can be done. It takes a few page pages, that as well. And exactly matches up what comes out from this uh, taking the derivative of this uh, Whittaker function. OK? OK, so I'll stop here. And I hope that at least the strategy is, is clear. Thanks. <laughs>